was supposed to be recorded, but there's no way of getting uh, the videotape, so, but it's 10 o'clock, so I propose that we uh, start. Um, actually, the amount of people that uh, show up in this shop is uh, rather limited, considering that this team has uh, 112 members. There's somebody on the team? Who's on this? Uh, who is on the team? <laughs> <laughs> ah, great. So you just want to have the uh, situation improved by the team, right? <laughs> but you are not on, uh, amongst the, ten, the top 10 uh, contributors of the team. No, absolutely not. I yeah. mean, uh, extremely uh, small area. I was wondering, Jonas is on the top, top 10. But I Jonas Smedegaard is in the top 10. See him here. Um, so actually I had a couple of things that I have possible of, of doing in this book. Uh, I propose that we first start with a quick round of uh, introduction to just see which areas people are interested in. Uh, because there's more than one thing that's covered by the team. Uh, actually, I wanted to discuss on the current state of situation, but I guess that's more for the team than for people outside of the team, although I like to note the numbers, which I find frightening. Um, there's a couple of things that I really don't like on about how JavaScript is in Debian. There's a lot of embedded packages. Uh, the JavaScript ecosystem doesn't is different than what we do in Debian. So, uh, and by the way, for all of these things, I have no answers because I haven't dived into it deeply. Uh, I just see stuff on the email list, and um, uh, well, that, that's I guess part of my introduction. I'm, I'm interested as a uh, as a package maintainer because my upstreams use JavaScript. I just want to depend on the right package instead of shipping embedded stuff. I actually have no clue about JavaScript. I don't like doing stuff in JavaScript, but well, it's world uses, so you have to do it. And indeed, I see a lot of embedded copies. I I have some. I admit that. I don't like it. I tend to make new packages for them, but that just means that I add more to the team. <laughs> because that's the obvious place where I put the stuff. Um, and for me, it's currently is in the area of jQuery and uh, jQuery related. Packages mostly. Um, so let's mix my introduction with the other agendas and then we'll go to the rest of you. Um, so, what I, I personally also want to learn of what other people are doing in the JavaScript area to make uh, the quality better, such as uh, uh, testing, which is uh, something that I would like to know how to do that, actually. So, people have ideas on that. Officially, JavaScript doesn't have Debian security support. Can we think of still doing it? But also, that may be more of a team related thing. Um, how to handle uh, dependency trees and actually making sure that you can be confident that you don't break half of the world, which typically happens, I guess. And of course, any other topics that people have and want to put up. Uh, I propose that people just add stuff to the to the notes if they if they have comments as well. So, what is your interest in JavaScript, Debian, JavaScript team? Um, and who are you? What do you do with it? Okay, uh, my name is Hubert uh, Hubert Chaddy. Um, I'm I'm not really interested in JavaScript itself, but there's some pack some applications that I'm interested in packaging that um, are JavaScript. So I'm trying to figure out um, best practices and stuff for JavaScript packaging so that I can um, package those. I actually don't consider myself as a member of the JavaScript team. I'm 
just beaten. As probably several others by these internal copies in my packages, and I try hard to get rid of these. And I also did some backports, and which also had JavaScript involved. And um, I was just wondering if I'm doing the right thing by um, doing what I'm doing in the Debian mid team, just use git build package and create um, Debian Jesse backports, Debian search backports and dump what I did there and push it to the JavaScript repository. That's what I'm doing and I just wanted to do it if it's correct. I don't know if it's correct. And Sorry about ruining your block by recording it. We can just <laughs> yeah. not bother if you like. We can just tear it all down. And finally, I have did those um, team matrix statistics you might be interested in, which clearly proves that the a JavaScript team is actually no real team, but uh, yes, I can go into detail if you want want to know something about this. Yeah, because I just put the numbers up here of uh, how many members do we have, but it would be interesting to see how many active members yeah. we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I worry that that may show a quite different uh, picture, actually. Yes. I guess for me the motivation is quite similar to what we have already had. I have some packages which do use JavaScript libraries and most of these are really just embedded copies and I was looking if there's something I could do about that, but yeah, that's pretty much the motivation for showing up here. Hi, I'm Martin Behrens. I'm very new to the Debian project, a long time user, but uh, want to still become a maintainer. and. Um, uh, I was drawn to this talk or this uh, buff because uh, because of the problem statement because um, I'm, I'm most interested not in the detail of particular packages but rather about the overall approach and what uh, what strategies people take so this whole idea of embedded problem etc is something that I understand dependency hell and um, I, I just hope that uh, that the cons that there's something constructive out of this discussion from that. Hello, I'm Chrisen. I'm not really packaging any JavaScript related things, but I just stumbled upon the situation of um, many JavaScript libraries or uh, tools being in active use that are not packaged, which is kind of unfortunate when a colleague starts using that and I prefer not to have anything out of the repository installed locally and I just like to understand the situation better. I is this working? Yes, okay. Uh, I'm Antonio Tessero. I adopted jQuery two years ago. I'm Thank not particularly that. fond or excited about JavaScript, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Any around here? Anyone around here who is? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonas. Uh, I help a bit with the, the Node.js package itself. Uh, but very little, it's not, I don't take, I only take blame for that, I don't take any pride for that. I mean, that, that goes to my co-maintainer. And then I maintain the Oclify JS, which is used a lot, I hope, it's the best, I believe. Um, and uh, Leaflet JS and, uh, and a few more JavaScript li libraries. So. Uh, hi, I'm AJ. I introduced myself on IRC yesterday and then promptly forgot to look at IRC for the rest of the day. Uh, I maintain Pump.io upstream, so uh, I'm not involved in Debian, but I would, I have been meaning to become involved in Debian for like four years now or something. So, yeah, well, but for four years, right? So we'll see if it happens. Uh, but yeah. We have Yeah, I would love to see Pump uh, packaged in Debian, uh, and, you know, I want to work with the JavaScript team to make that happen, and uh, uh, improve tooling around NPM and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Hi, what are we doing? Intros? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Alana Hashman. Uh, I am currently sort of leading the closure team. Uh, I am here for two reasons. One, uh, I am kind of curious about targeting closure scripts once we target closure uh, compiling on the JVM. Uh, and then also uh, I am here because I met with one of the release managers of Node uh, and am 
hoping to sort of figure out the situation with JavaScript and try to make JavaScript in Debian better if that's possible. Uh, one of the things that we chatted about was specifically how I guess Node Upstream is very complicated and apparently uses a vendored patched NPM, which is one of the reasons that they've had a hard time packaging for Debian or something like that. Uh, and so they're apparently looking into doing a very minimal, like low dependency uh, installer, which will allow you to like uh, install a user space NPM of their choice. So uh, anyways, uh, curious to hear what's going on. Mike, Mike, please. To clarify, when you say uh, they're looking at doing a small installer, do you mean Node Upstream? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes for the mic. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeffrey. I don't currently have an interest in Node.js, but I had one in my last job and will almost certainly have one in my next one, and so I would like to just pay attention to what's happening because I'm curious. Hi, Gabriel. Um, student and Debian user. Kind of curious about how all the um, node packaging will go. So of the newcomers that were after my first question, is there, uh, how many of you are on the, uh, officially on, uh, member of these 112 people? Not me. Oh, oh uh, Antonio, I guess, but. <laughs> No, so actually this was intended, or at least that was the incentive for me to meet up with my team members, but apparently most interest is not from the team, which actually doesn't surprise me. Um, just a couple of numbers that I tried to look up. The, the team maintains about uh, 1,100 packages, of which half have a newer upstream version, which sort of describes the extremely awkward position we're in. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how to approach uh, what we need to do or what we could do here. Um, do people have ideas of, of what to share of how they approach things regarding JavaScript? Because uh, uh, it's mentioned before, if I understand uh, correctly, I'm not heavily involved in JavaScript. I s try to stay away from it, <laughs> uh, but I do try to. Uh, I, I, there's a couple of JavaScript packages that I maintain and that I want to build properly. For instance, where I have a hard time. Um, uh, as far as I read, is that the the the, the biggest challenge is that uh, in the JavaScript ecosystem. Uh, there's a lot of uh, micro packages and that doesn't scale very well with how Debian works with packages with a big uh, control uh, copyright file and control files and stuff like that and um, uh, so yeah I, I, as I said in, in my first introduction as well I don't have uh, much answers in this buff but I, I really like to to share ideas of what we could do to, to try and improve this situation. One of the things that I found very scary is I uh, did the last couple of up uploads of jQuery Y, uh, introduced a new upstream version, which did break stuff, uh, but I couldn't figure out a better way than just upload and then see having maintainers find out that stuff breaks and have it fixed, because I have absolutely no clue how I can properly test this in a way where you cover uh, anything that your the package is doing, but as the example of Antonio, I think well, the, the, I think jQuery was like a couple of years behind in what we had, and it was actually triggering a lot of people to embed jQuery in their packages because that's also part of that ecosystem. Like you just ship it. I mean, typically they're not extremely used files, so you just include them in your package and you're done with it. Uh, which from the Debian point of perspective and for security reasons is a not very nice way, but typically these kind of things are integrated with the version that upstream ships. So it also doesn't scale very well of having lots of upstreams which depend on slightly different versions of the JavaScript and I really have no idea what our answer as Debian should be to this situation also because this team is like 
I don't consider it really a team. It's mostly uh, uh, just a, a name for uh, lots of uh, identities uh, in Debian. Any comment on that? So, I don't have the solution either. Uh, but I think, as I sounds like you think also, that it, the proper way to do it is that we package things separately from each other so that we can track it properly. Putting it inside another package is the same as you're saying, I package this thing without maintaining it. That's essentially what you're saying when you're making a code copy inside, leaving a code copy inside the source of another package. It's a, you, you are not sharing your packaging with the rest of Debian, which essentially means I'm not going to maintain this thing. I'm not going to reveal to the rest of the project what the, the, the ABI of this thing is. <laughs> because I don't want anyone else to use this, that's horrible. <laughs> and it's very horrible. Yeah, uh, but, but we, might, we might have done some, so for, for 20 years before we started packaging jQuery, uh, <laughs> and it might be stuffed in a lot of times before. That's no excuse at all. So the solution is that we package the newer version when ready, but we don't know when ready is. I believe that the, the the, one, the, the important thing here is JavaScript, the JavaScript ecosystem, the JavaScript community, they have something they call the semantic versioning system that not all of packages use, but that's the common norm in, in this ecosystem. Almost all of them. Sure, yes. It is very, very popular to use NPM, and NPM is, is, is strongly promoting this, so that's one nice thing about the JavaScript ecosystem that you can... You can whine about a lot of things in JavaScript, but that's one thing that, that they do. It's, it's a young thing, and then they're using this, version, uh, this semantic versioning system. So if we can then say, assume, one thing I propose is that we assume that packages in Debian, depending on JavaScript packages, we can assume that they are using semantic versioning system, which means that if you don't support a newer version with the same minor, I think it is, then you have to explicitly say that this is very strictly to this micro version, which should be really odd in that situation. And in the same way, you shouldn't bump to a new major version because then you know things will break. You should then keep the old one or coordinate with existing packages. Things that are very normal in Debian among library packages, but we don't have this, this so tight uh, uh, integration, you cannot just rebuild and then things will break and you, clearly to you because we don't have strong uh, test suits. No, but so so, so I, I, I just went through our uh, UDD page of the team and actually I noticed that uh, there's an extremely lot of node packages that actually do have an outer package test. So I would love also to learn how you can write a test suite for a, uh, I mean, if you have a, a jQuery or jQuery UI, the, the one that I upload a couple of times, uh, if I can actually test some of the stuff that I depend on, I would be feeling a lot more comfortable because now it's a blind box upload. I, I can't, I, I mean, I, I do this because my, my package depends on it. And actually my upstream says they have a bug open. They opened it themselves. They say, we're, we're incompatible with uh, jQuery what, what, UI 112, the, the one currently in Debian. Basically, they, they have to untangle their code where they embedded the copy. They let, made lots of changes to jQuery UI files instead of where actually I think they only required uh, uh, style changes. So they should do that in a later file. And they made already some changes, but it's not integrated. Basically, they have a bug open that says, we're not ready for 112, and still I do it in Debian. And I just hope for the best. I have no clue, because I don't even know what they mean when they say it doesn't work. Is it just that the, the number of pixels is not what they want, and stuff is slightly disaligned? I don't know. And I'm breaking probably all people's packages by a next upload, and I wouldn't even. So uh, You are leaving today, so we can't. Yeah, you can beat me up after the meeting, that's fine. Yeah. So I went to look at out of that page to see what exactly the automated out-of-package tests are testing. And 
It's just a simple require test. So it's Node.js-e require package name. So, so basically it's doing pure testing parts in the JavaScript basically way. Basically nothing, yeah. No, pure parts doesn't load code. So that's better than nothing, but then I think we need uh, to do more than that. Is the, I think uh, NPM has a standard command line to run the test. Is it NPM test or something? I don't know, I'm not really. So, so I believe generally, I don't know specifically for jQuery UI, but generally the, the, the problem we have with the uh, test suits that upstream makes for the uh, browser-based uh, tools is that they require commonly uh, some of the high-level uh, complex things to remote control uh, a web browser or emulate a web browser or pull in uh, web, uh, this uh, Kit, web kits uh, based cu custom web browsers and none of those are really reliable so the the, t the framework for t for running the tests are not in debian either because they are horrible or because they have a, a huge dependency stack the same kind of problem we have with npm itself so uh, yes upstream Chicken sometimes are nice and, and write these these test tools also for the for the browser parts but the parts, browser parts typically has a, a higher dependency stack. So in principle, we can, we can get there by people doing it's, all it's of these good small problem dependencies. Um, OK, but I think a fair share of the package are not browser-based, right? I mean, you have still uh, some good number of packages that are not that browser. Do yeah. the target browser stuff? Yeah, sure. We, we, it was just that the, the issue raised here was the frustration of shouldn't we also have enable the test suits for browser-based okay. library uh, right. JavaScript and not only for the server-based JavaScript because the server-based JavaScript is is some of them is enabled. Some of the test suits there are enabled <coughs> exactly because the test suit should, suit can be run. Okay. The dependencies and for the test suit is there. So I, I maintain out of that page. So if you want anyone that understands that better. Like, is it an NPM test out of the, uh, the, how to, the standard command to run tests? Is it any NPM test? Almost always. But uh, it seems to me that the problem here is not that, the problem here is not that we're not running tests. The problem is that jQuery upstream changes API a lot, particularly because jQuery, jQuery in particular is pre-NPM and pre semantic versioning and so they like they're like whatever we have our own thing uh, and so I mean you can run tests all you want on new versions but then other applications are still going to break because the you know test suite matches the new version right yeah, but, but the point is that if something that uses jQuery has its own test suite then we can know that the new jQuery oh, yeah. breaks yeah that's true that's yeah. So. yeah so my, my back I mean the reason why I start doing anything in the JavaScript area is uh, Cocti, which is a web application. Uh, and indeed, what I would like to have some test, I mean, currently I do a, a wget curl, uh, recursive uh, run of the whole archive, and then I just see that my links work. Right? That's already uh, found some problems in the JavaScript area where somebody uploaded a new version and removed the file that I depended on. So that I could see. But I, I don't know how my package is using it, but I would love to learn also that I can actually test that without going into basically reproducing whatever the package is doing in my test suite. One thing I would like to see this team become less afraid of doing is uh, shipping multiple versions of packages in the same way that we ship GTK2 and JTK, G, blah, GTK3 side by side. I mean, obviously this isn't tenable for every single version of a package ever, but uh, I can imagine a scenario where, you know, we shipped like some, you know, a little somewhat old version of jQuery for um, applications that haven't been updated to the new version and then like, you know, the very latest version of jQuery for applications that have or um, for NPM packages, you know, shipping like um, the latest major version and then the, the major version behind that. Um, Just, I, think it, I think no one is against that. It only needs the volunteer. Right. I mean, it needs someone to maintain. That's what I emphasized before: is 
If you stuff yeah, it in, uh, you're not Coding is easy, easy yeah. That, that's the simple part. Packaging is easy, yeah. yeah that's what I'm afraid of, of, uh, of the, what we're, we as a team or we as a project or private who's doing, a pirate who's doing the work uh, with uh, this big note stack for, uh, there's an extremely big amount of packages that flow into the archive, which is a lot of work to create all this. But indeed, uh, Jonas mentioned it a couple of times on the mail list as well. It's, it's not about the initial upload. That's the easy part, even if it's a lot of work. Yes. I am curious about how the version, multi-version problem, like what the scale of it is. So how many versions of jQuery are claimed by, say, the upstreams? of the packages in Debian. So assuming for, assuming at the moment. <laughs> we don't know because people make code copies. So Debian right. cannot figure that out. Okay. Without having it outside, we cannot really uh, understand the sure. problem. It seems like this is a place where we could be of a significant value to upstream if we were a little bit less pushy about everyone has to be on the same version of jQuery at the exact same yeah, time. So we, we're not pushy. Uh, Wait, which we're not, yeah. And we I, I have a specific data point about jQuery because yeah. I deal with that. So uh, jQuery is currently using, we have the latest released version with three point something. <coughs> and before I did that, I, I issued lots of warnings. People, I'm going to do that. And then after I did that, I received no complaints at all. So oh, what? I saw oh, one. Nice. As fair, what? I saw one. Yeah. You were so late in the cycle. <laughs> so my other question about cycle is how much of the upstreams that say we know we don't work with the new version yet, please hold on, is happening for tracking packages and unstable versus the version we want in the release? Which is say, is there some room where we have multiple possibly non-security supported packages during the unstable lifetime and then once freeze is happening or about to happen, that converges into one version. Is that, I'm just thinking out loud here. And I also, I know other teams have similar problems with, you know, we, there are upstreams that want conflicting versions of the same thing and we don't know how to keep them happy, so. Yeah, Kurt, currently the whole, whole story is uh, uh, the security, it's not covered by security, right? Right. Which is something that I also like to get rid of. I mean, I was triggered to actually, I mean, we could still, <coughs> as a team, we, the dangerous anarchical word, uh, follow the security uh, issues that are raised for JavaScript, which I don't think we currently do, and we could still provide it, although the security team is not telling us. Uh, so on the issue of security, that was one of the things that I wanted to raise. So like I saw a note in the stretch release which said JavaScript and Node are not supported like with respect to security support because there aren't volunteers. And when I saw that, I was like, what? That's what? Uh, and uh, so, like, as a result of that, and I went and talked to Upstream, and I said, hey, Upstream, do you have a security team? Because they say they don't have any volunteers. Uh, and they said, yeah, we have a security team. We want to help, but we don't know how. Uh, so, uh, no, so, so what, I, I, I'm not on the security team, and I haven't asked them, but what I think, what basically they're saying is, yeah, we do get uh, these uh, CVEs in. I mean, what security team often just does is contact the maintainers, talk to the maintainers of, well, of what needs to happen. But they're not tracking uh, the JavaScript or code, I don't know exactly where the boundary lives, but they're not tracking that because of past reasons or whatever. Or uh, it, I, I, I can maybe add a little to that. I believe that the situation is specifically for Node.js is that uh, there is one maintainer, which is not me, that, uh, whereas Jeremy Lal is uh, the maintainer of Node.js and he could use help. Uh, so it's not that upstream is, is, is slow. That's not the problem here at all. It's, it's not a complaint to upstream. Uh, Node.js upstream runs its course and, and it pays. It's great, probably, I don't know, hopefully. Uh, but Node.js in Debian is lagging behind and there's more to it than just packaging what upstream releases. That's one of the, the things is that we want to split out libv8 and maintain that properly, which our definition of properly is a different one than upstream is, is recognizing. We try to package to more architectures than upstream does, or we try to do that at some point at least. So there's, there's, there's difference in what we, we define as being maintenance uh, in Debian and upstream. 
So it's additional work than just grabbing the tarballs from upstream. Uh, so, so it's not a complaint to upstream. That's just the, the main. <laughs> yeah, no, I think and I think it's more like upstream wants to help right. with Debian yes. because they see like there's that gap, yeah. uh, but they just don't know how. One, so one, one huge thing that that has happened recently is we no longer need to be we the weird guys in the wor world of Node.js. We don't need to rename the mm -hmm. binary anymore. Yes. That's great, yeah, and that's people, helping a lot because that really created tension. That. that that created tension, especially for the npm uh, part of, of of the ecosystem, but. So, so that, that thing is, is gone, that is, that is in the past. But, uh, so yes, we could love to have more help if anybody could, but I, I don't think it, it, what it requires is people joining Debian, uh, <laughs> tuning into to, to, to the, 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 the kind of, of issues we have, the things like uh, convenient code covers in, in other packages, and, and so how the dynamic is within Debian, it's not, coding in things, serving it to Debian. Uh, 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 so we welcome more developers, and especially the one guy who is hang hanging on, clinging on to Node.js, he could need some help. Someone who understands the C++ mm -hmm. happening in Node.js. I think that is, that is a crucial part for... for. What, what the security team did uh, uh, half a year ago was saying, we can look back at the history for the last half year or so, or the last year, and we can recognize a pattern of you are very late in responding to the, the CVEs. And, and, and we still see that it's lagging behind. So we would like to, to kill Node.js and not release it for the next Debian release. And we said, no, this, this is not going to happen. But so what they did instead was saying, OK, we release it because you woke up <laughs> when we warned you, but we will not. Uh, be responsible for the for the security of this, because it's still lacking behind too much. So that's the situation. The solution is more manpower in Debian. Uh. Sounds good. Um, well, I, I said I'm not in the Java team, but uh, regarding the uh, more manpower, do you have some kind of team policy where newcomers could read how to behave in the team? Well, we don't have a problem with behavior in the team, so we have not uh, tried to restrict people on that. We have a very loose policy, and that's also why the, the, the team is very loose. What we have a, po a policy is that, uh, no, there is a policy, and I will not even dare to say what it is. I haven't looked at the page for a long time. <laughs> I didn't even There's know there was one. <laughs> so uh, I saw that the IRC channel looks uh, at least relatively active, uh, like people respond. Uh, is the mailing list also? Yes, there are people on the mailing list and people will respond. It's not used so much. I don't know why. IRC like, what's the best seems way to, to be more active, but, but mailing list is active too. It's just not used that much. But we, we are people on the mailing list, and I think we are more and different people on the mailing list. So what I typically recommend people that come on IRC and then feel that, that they didn't get a response, that happens sometimes, is I say, well, use the mailing list because the people who are reflecting more might be the ones who are using mail instead of IRC. I'm, it is I'm not on IRC. Right, yeah. So. To, answer <laughs> my, to answer my question, I found the policy. It fits on one screen. Um, well. That's a good thing. Yes, uh, maybe, uh, but <laughs> you, you prove that you need more people, so maybe it doesn't work to get more people, even if it's a good thing to be short. I, I actually, uh, another point, uh, so uh, <coughs> am I correct in saying that we mostly have two uh, groups, that's the Node stuff and that's the, the, the jQuery stuff, or is that not, uh, I mean, that's just a feeling that I have, but I, I haven't substantiated you, that. Uh, that's an arbitrary uh, split, I think. That, okay. that, I, there, are p there are packages running for server, yes, and the people there, some of this, this is, is C-based uh, stuff, uh, or C++ or whatever it is. Uh, but no, I don't think that's, that you can say that there's a split. There are people, you, another split will say there are people who really don't give a fuck about JavaScript, but have to do it anyway, and they just want, want to throw it in there, like yourself. And then there are people who are fumbling and trying to make, the, the, look at this as, a, as an ecosystem and trying to build a, a higher stack, like the people, especially for working on NPM, and, and you would need that for, <laughs> for, for pump, I believe. No, not would, but could. Uh, the whole stack. It's a large uh, stack needed for... for no, the, but don't the push company. the work on him. Huh? Yeah, so, so things like jQuery doesn't need that many dependencies, I believe. Uh, it's, oh, it's there, yeah, actually oh, okay, it does. Sorry. So it, 
It's a hill. It needs ground to build, so at the time we didn't have ground, so they have to. I had to rewrite my own version of the build system. Right, yeah, more or less that. Yeah, but I now I we have ground so for the UI. <laughs> Thank oh, yeah. you for the great example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so now we have, we do have ground. So if w anyone is interested, I could hand over jQuery, and you could delete everything that I did before, and now use the proper build system. It's okay. Ah, uh, okay. So it needs grunt plus grunt dash whatever. Yeah, I don't know. So grunt itself is there. I don't know if the other things are there. But yeah, I guess. Uh, sorry for interrupting. But, um, indeed, for me also, I, I have absolutely no experience with grunt except when I tried to run it and didn't work. What I tried to do, and so indeed, people from the ecosystem would help on doing the the things because I'm trying it with all my experience from, from Debian elsewhere. And this is just, for me, a, a, well, a weird, new, nice experience, except that I'd, I'd like to see it more of a team than just the, 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 the group of individuals that I now see. Because that would make it also easier, I guess, to, to do this kind of things. I've just, I've just looked up the uh, JavaScript policy page as well. It is indeed very short, too short. Uh, as a result, uh, for a beginner, it doesn't give anything like how to. Um, so there is, I'd say, what it's stating in policy is what. Uh, in other words, the end result, uh, that there should be requirements, a few naming conventions, and so on. And that's about all. So I would say that uh, th this is part of the problem rather than part of a solution. And it should be bigger. There should certainly be ways to attract people and to get them started. I'm absolutely not in a position to do that because I have really don't have the feeling that I know what I'm doing in this, even in this team. So not even know what the policy should look like. That's okay. I didn't know what I was doing, and I revived a dead team. Sorry. You can I, do it too. <laughs> Maybe it's right. Moment. I, I I pick my other challenges. <laughs> Did you have anything oh, I, to I have, share on your metrics? I've put in the, uh, the links to the team matrix statistics. Maybe you'd uh, present the first one. <coughs> so actually, these pages take ages oh, to load no, because of these no, thousands no, no, this, of, uh, of packages that we have. That's a, ah, yeah, this, uh, this graph presents um, the, the commits uh, for certain packages, so you have more than 300 packages which have commits only by a single maintainer, and you have 150 packages. Where and they commits. were committed only once, I guess. Well, th that's <laughs> not part of the thing. Uh, no, 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 uh, that's not possible because I'm excluding uh, commits uh, of people who committed less than five times. So right. random commits are not uh, part of the statistics, but uh, these commit are at least committed five times, and but it, it's a single uh, maintainer package relation, I think. So the ones which are maintained by two persons, maybe one person started and the other pay, uh, person took over, and the rest is probably noise. Oh. And I'm currently calculating the upgrade graphs, but yeah, okay. So if you replace JavaScript there with Ruby ex Ruby dash extras in the opening an in a new here, tab. Ruby? Yeah, do it that in a new tab, <coughs> so you can compare the two. It's probably Ruby. the same. Hmm? You should comp uh, compare with the Perl team. Like this? Yes. Extras with, uh, with an S. Yeah, so that's oh. the difference yeah. between yeah. a team yeah. that works and a team yeah. that doesn't. Yeah. It's, uh, the Perl team is even more impressive, but this is also quite okay. And what I guess that we are looking at is also an echo of how well-structured is the upstream thing. Not to bash upstream here per se, but upstream way of being well-structured for JavaScript has an oddity that clashes with Debian in the upstream tools, NPM especially, relies on 
the network and relies on binary blobs that are copied over and, and other things that has, has been cleaned out, in, especially in Perl-based and I guess also in Ruby. So yes, we might interpret this as being, ah, oh, so people, people are ego, uh, egoistic in the JavaScript team. Yes, that might be true. We can also interpret this as being, huh, this is a, a different kind of challenge as, uh, than the, the, the teams where they are more well-formed and fitting well to the Debian kind of maintaining packages, putting <coughs> things into pieces. The same. And, and by the way, about the, the policy, I will not write the policy. I recognize that, okay, I was wrong. There is no proper policy. Great that this is it identified. Now we need to find a volunteer. So another area where we need a volunteer. Are we keeping like a, is there like a to-dos page or something on the wiki where we're documenting all of these gaps? You just volunteered. Uh. <laughs> no, what? OK, so, so I don't want to. So, I don't have my own team. <laughs> uh, let, let, me, let me clarify. I don't think I will be good at writing a policy, but I will be very happy to have someone pick my brain on my, I have, I have been along so for some time, and I think I have opinions, and I can maybe share something that even is valuable. I don't know. But I need someone to interpret that or, or organize the, the, those thoughts. So yeah. I, I welcome people picking my brain. Uh, I will be available for that. I'm just thinking of more like a page in which someone can go to and see all of the stuff that hasn't been done, like to do right policy. For, for the list of packages missing or packages uh, wanted and things like that, we have... Uh, yeah, that's all on the bug tracker. Uh, no, no. I, I can uh, in addition to the bug tracker, we have the, these, the machinery to try to extract from NPM the hierarchy of which other packages does these thing need mm -hmm. trickling down. And then which of these are packets at the moment in which versions and what is missing there. So we okay. have some machinery for that and for specific packages like NPM and a, a few others, we have then thrown this on a wiki and we replace okay, these pages some, from time. So that is very ma machine processed uh, task lists, but we don't have the things like more socially. Uh, okay. Does someone want to write that down as like a, an action item? I, I, I wrote it down here. I I guess I can take up the task to create a wiki page of uh, improving Java script team uh, situation. Thank you. Um, so I can start the wiki page and at least dump this information in there and put it on the mail list. Uh, I'm not going to drive it uh, further than that, so uh, we can take that as a start point. If uh, anybody is, uh, well, if, if there's people committing to at least uh, help and traction the process, because I'm not going to drive this. So, so ad hoc, like anybody popping up on IRC or anybody dropping a mail on, on the mailing lists, I can commit to try to be more uh, attentive to these things and, and respond. Uh, that's as much as I, I can offer here. And uh, one of the things that people can pop up on the mailing list or on IRC to do if they like, they don't even need to uh, maintain packages. They could also uh, just contribute with just picking brains of me and others that, that respond to them and try to put that into uh, the wiki pages. That was also clearly helpful for us, just for the video also. Uh, anybody considering doing help and not daring to maintain, uh, take over jQuery, <laughs> they might help in other ways. No, just, just a comment. I, I, I looked at quite some of these. Uh, the, well, I didn't look at a lot of the packages, but I thought about as so very often these kind of new versions, I mean, it's, it's trivial if the, the, the package and the upstream and its minor changes to actually get the new upstream, build it, and upload it. And I could, I mean, I could do that. You could nearly automate some of the stuff uh, uh, not, of course, the final. You you need to do some checks, um, but well, I'm I'm extremely that. uncomfortable of actually doing that because you have no. I don't know what I would be doing. That's not maintenance. We need so to round up. Anybody having a last comment? Yes, I have one. 
doesn't need to be me, absolutely. Uh, I was just going to say that I, as someone who is heavily involved in an upstream JavaScript project and, and also tracks NPM and Node upstream pretty, quick, pretty closely, uh, if anyone wants to take a crack at uh, updating the policy, I would love to, um, you know, answer questions like whether things make sense and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if no one does it, I would eventually do it, but I don't have enough experience on the Debian side yet for, yeah. Uh, one thing that might be very useful is organizing a sprint. So when you get people together physically, it uh, helps a lot to build uh, a sense of team. So you, you can figure out what other people are willing, would be willing to go to a sprint, do a wiki page, and then figure out what's the best <laughs> geographical location to do that. And then in Debian has money to pay for that, so. Let's uh, cut it there then. Well, uh, okay, thanks for coming and joining in the discussion. Thanks for organizing.